Serenity draws Ingrid and Doug Green to a garden that's always a flurry of activity. Post oaks and live oaks host burrs on their 28 acres west of Laga Vista. I've got 13 water stations out there, 150 birdhouses. I just like the wildlife. Well, we bought out, actually bought out here in 1997, and we bought a lake lot. And then in like 2002, they opened up another section. And me and my wife walked this property and just fell in love with it because it's, I've got hundreds of post oaks that you can't even reach around, and it's just beautiful and quiet. Since deer populate the land too, Doug built an enclosed garden for pollinators dedicated to his dad, Paul Green. So my dad, Paul Green, he loved plants. He was a member of the Austin Men's Garden Club for many, many years. When Paul opened Paul's Beauty Salon on Red River Street in 1951, he styled up generations of customers and no doubt answered garden questions. And when we moved out here, he kept trying to give me plants. And I go, Dad, I'm not ready because the deer are going to eat them. And so after my dad passed away, and I do have some plants up top, but the deer would eat them. And, I, and I, I'm a plant nut also, so I built this. I've learned to draw about 12 years ago to go in a program called Corel Draw. So I could lay this thing out. But I was going to start with a 40 foot walls and make it a square. Well, 40 feet by 40 feet is 1,600 square feet. If you add one more wall and make it a pentagon, it goes from 1,600 to 2,700 square feet. So just by three more posts and two more pieces of wire, I almost doubled the size of the garden. And then I just kind of took it from there and made the water fountain in the shape of a pentagon. There's some planter boxes that are in the shape of a pentagon. And there's a game to find, find Doug's pentagons because there's 17 pentagons out here. To thin mountain cedars for sun-loving plants, Doug worked with off-duty firefighter Ryan Stark. He would cut the tree down and I would haul it off to my burn pit and then we would come back and dig the roots out. And I spent many hours disking the soil to getting every root out. Ryan drove posts four feet into the ground with an air hammer, securing them without concrete. The post or drill stem, like drill stem pipe that they would drill oil wells with, uh, you can buy it anywhere. This happened to be new drill stem, it's never been used. And that way you, don't, you know there's no chemicals inside or anything. That wire is actually a concrete wire that they put into concrete to form like the rebar mesh. Uh, I've used it before in a roll, but it's really hard to unroll and it can hurt you. Uh, this, this actually came in 20 foot by eight foot panels. So I put the post every 10 feet, so it would span the 20 feet. So every section is just a single, single piece of wire. It doubled duties as vertical support for perennial and annual vines that flower across the seasons. Annual, self-seeding purple hyacinth bean blooms in late summer and fall. But I started off with cross vine and, and uh, evergreen wisteria, and then I got a passion vine, and then I actually this year started planting grapes. Uh, I'm gonna plant and grow grapes just for the birds. You know, if you're gonna do something for the butterflies, do something for the birds also. Since butterflies need water too, he places shallow dishes of sand moistened with drip tubes. Males puddle for salt and amino acids. One of them has pure sand, one of them has salt and sand, and one of them has a little bit of horse manure in it. Because I found that, I, can't, I think it's a yellow sulfur butterfly, I would go over there and there'd be 15 of them on my horse manure pile. An original member of the Austin Pond Society in the 90s, Doug applied his experience to design a dimensional pond. Bees and wasps perch on its edges while butterflies puddle in the gravel. I wanted places for the birds to have a bird bath and for the bees and butterfly to get a little drink where I call it skim water. I dug a one cubic yard hole. I have a bobcat with a digger on it. So I dug a square hole. And being a ponder, I put a liner in it, a pond liner. And on this particular case, I used upside down pickle buckets with holes in it to give me more volume of water and less pea gravel I had to haul to put in there. So then I just filled it all in with pea gravel. I poured the concrete main structure and I made a mold that would have rivers going through it. He designed one fountain with an upside down container topped with a sphere. I actually poured that out of concrete. One of, the, one of my grandchildren had a volleyball or a soccer ball out here that had gotten old and I just cut a hole in it and poured concrete in it and then cut the, cut the ball off of it. And I put a pipe through the middle to start with. Doug looked into such good soil that young plants quickly filled in. And that's why we kind of picked it. 
where you, when you're out at the lake, you get a lot of rocks. I call it a chocolate loam everywhere, but I've got some washes that you could bag up and sell as play sand. It's so sandy. And this property is a weird piece of property. And if I'm looking to the backyard, there are no live oaks in front of me and there's no post oaks behind me. It's just, I've talked to a wildlife biologist about its different stratuses of the soil. The post oaks went down where it was sandy and lived, and then the live oaks live up top. He nurtures his growing plants with aged compost from his horse manure and sawdust from his woodworking projects and sawmills. But the biggest thing I did for the garden, I bought a load of granite sand. A lot of people don't realize granite gravel, decomposed granite gravel, is a mulch. It has nutrients in it. it it's porous. In just two years, the garden's a habitat smorgasbord and visual sensation. I was reading about gardens and the first year is going to be pretty good. The second year is going to be a little better, and then the third year will be your best. So I'm, I'm waiting for the third year, because I can't imagine it being any better than this. And I told myself I wasn't going to go nuts. You know, I wasn't going to, maybe I wasn't going to plant the whole thing the first year. But then I couldn't stop. You know, every time I'd go to a nursery, I went to nurseries in San Antonio. I went to every nursery in Austin. And I asked the owner, or pretty knowledgeable person, what's your favorite butterfly plant? Almost everyone would mention Greg's mist flower. And I said, okay, what's number two? And so I would just build on that. And it's amazing, the, the butterflies this year were on plants I've never seen them on before. I love the butterflies, I love the hummingbirds, and birds and bees, and I just, this is my zen time out here. Paul passed down his gardening love to Ingrid and Doug's son, Ryan, who painted a tribute to future generations. He accents with containers, purchased or scavenged and modified. But most of them are made out of two by six cedar. And one thing I've learned by doing this is you wanna leave, you wanna leave a little place where the dirt can settle. You don't want the dirt right up to the top of the board because you want to be able, when you're watering, you want that water to stay in and soak in. But the other containers that are like metal troughs, some of them are fire rings that just don't have a bottom. And there's some places that sell planters that don't have bottoms. And then they sell goat troughs or horse troughs that have bottoms. The ones without a bottom cost more because they're a planter. So I would buy the ones with the bottom and just cut the bottom out. I found anything that could make a container. There's a culvert over there that just was left over from a job and I took it and it's perfect. And so it, with everything not having a bottom, then your roots, you can't overwater and your roots get down in the real dirt and you just keep going for years and years. In his shop, he designs and welds mild steel containers to measure. I'm a hobbyist metal worker and woodworker, mainly woodworker. I started doing woodwork in junior high. I started doing metal work when we moved out here, learned, taught myself to weld. And then I bought a CNC plasma cutter, which is a, uses a computer to draw. You draw it and then send it to the machine, it cuts it out. And so I could cut out things like the leaf planters and the butterfly chairs. I basically built the website just to show off. I do get business off my website, but a lot of it's word of mouth. Since we're outside of Austin, I have a drop off point in North Austin that a store that allows me to come and go and drop off items and pick up items to engrave or build. And I have a few people come out here. Most of what I make are gifts. You know, I just enjoy making stuff for other people.